Hey guys, what's up? I'm back again with another mobile detailing video showcasing another beautiful mobile detailing setup right here, guys. This is a Mercedes Metris, and I'm going to ask the owner of the setup a few questions, and we're gonna get right into the video. And just to give you guys a backdrop of how he ended up getting the Metris for his mobile detailing setup, is he ended up having a nice car when he was getting into the business and he decided to sacrifice that nice car sell it off and just transition right into a nice van so we're going to ask him some questions on why he ended up getting the van does he regret getting it how much does it cost and the type of setup he has in there and his procedure for doing some of these uh jobs on site so let's get right into the video guys so I see you got the uh, Mercedes Metris here. Let me ask you a question, man. How much did this thing cost? And how, actually, tell me, how much do they cost brand new? Uh, brand new, I think they cost around 49 or 50. I guess it depends on your region where you live. Uh, however, I did get mine at CarMax. I had to trade in my Lexus for this vehicle and it came out to be 42. 42k yes, cool sir. cool cool so you got a you got a discount because it was used so you saved a good amount of money probably and uh so with the mercedes metris man um uh, is would you say you would get it again is it was a solid purchase yeah like, i really like if, it. if you if I you like were it. to do it over again would you get it yes i would really i wouldn't hesitate because we know they're like they're they're expensive on maintenance right Honestly, so, I, I've been doing the maintenance myself. I mean, I am, I was, or I still am a car enthusiast. So I know the basics as far as your oil change, your spark plugs, your air filter, your cabin filter, all the basic stuff that I, I'm pretty sure everybody else out there knows how to do. All right, guys. So you heard it. Um, it's doable. And so check it out. This video is kind of for those guys who are maybe on the verge of considering getting a Mercedes Metris. And... You know, for me, that's out of my ballpark, but there's a lot of guys out there that are thinking of getting a large cargo van or possibly a Mercedes Metris like this one. And this video is for you guys. So let's ask some questions to get to know about the Metris and to get to know more about it. So as you guys can see, it's a beautiful interior and I'm sure he has a good quality of life operating this unit on a day-to-day -day basis as far as it drives, the power, the size, everything about it, just the status driving a Mercedes as well. So, hey, Jonathan, uh, how, what size motor do you have in this thing? It is. Is it a V6? No, it is a four cylinder. I believe it is a 2.0 horse four cylinder. And how many horsepower? I believe it's 210. And do you feel it? Is it happy <laughs> compared to my Lexus? No. Yeah. And what kind of Lexus were you riding? I had a RC 300. RC 300? Yeah. I mean, that so, too was four cylinder turbo as well. Okay. You know, four cylinders are, are nice. I love them. I mean, that's all I own. And so, guys, just to give you some content on how. Uh, Jonathan operates his business. He works full time, I think about 40 hours a week at his job site, location where he works. He drives his van to that job. When he gets off work, he just walks to the parking lot, gets to his van and goes and starts servicing clients with his mobile detailing setup. So, it makes sense that he has this type of unit, a Mercedes, and it's it's very reliable and efficient and dependable because he's commuting to work. He's commuting to all of his job sites for mobile detailing. So can you show us something about this van I noticed when you just got here? What is this right here? So I noticed there was some type of mechanism there that it locks the doors together. Oh, Can you show us how that works? Yeah, it's just a magnet holder, Brandon, for uh, the doors. Okay. So, so when you open the door, yeah, it's does just, this door open more if this wasn't open? Just a little bit, not just too a much. Bit? Yeah. 
So basically, when you open so the doors, hold, let me hold it, and then yeah. you 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 can open that one and show us the this full length. This one will come out further. So if you did let that go, that would actually further. hit this. So if it would hit it. Oh yeah, totally. Okay, but the way you did it was you open this first, and then now this connects to yes. that, and but, it holds it. Yeah. Since we're on a slant, it doesn't stay open. So what I do is just grab one of these clippers and just put it down here and lock it in place. Okay. And I seen you sitting in this van earlier. You were chilling, looking at your phone, just having a break. It's pretty cool. You got all that space too. Yeah, it's pretty good. Got it all done at H2O. All right, guys. So if you're wondering where we are at, we are in beautiful, sunny California in a nice city called Mission Viejo. And we're servicing a doctor's vehicle, which is a really fancy Lexus here. And it's kind of cool how Jonathan gets his clients because for me, it's a lot different from what I do. I have a local Google business page. People search mobile detailer near them. I pop up. Um, I do a lot of Instagram advertising, TikTok, YouTube advertising, and I post the cities that I'm in. So all of my surrounding cities, I get a lot of advertisement from flyers and uh, repeat business and just advertisement for my van. So a lot of my business is local customers in my surrounding cities and I grown accustomed to that and I generally only service about a 10 mile radius. If I have to even go about 15 miles, I start getting uncomfortable with that. But with Jonathan, he pays monthly ads on Yelp and he basically is just hustling with that uh, type of avenue and when he gets the calls from Yelp he goes and he just takes care of it and his service range I think is like what like 80 miles or something you would say uh yeah from your home and your work you would go within like a 60 to 80 mile radius yes. right so you, sometimes your commute to get to a job is like an hour right yeah. so like today from your work in Stanton you took you 50 minutes right correct and then to get home you're gonna go an hour and a half so hour and a half maybe even two hours depending on traffic Center of traffic all right so you're charging accordingly depending on how much it costs for ads yes traveling gas and, and the cool thing about what he does is he's these clients that are that are finding him they're like doctors and stuff and, and what else would you say um, type of they're like higher end individuals like we're in a beautiful gated community here there's a man-made lake right around the corner yeah that's pretty cool we gotta so, check that out yeah we should check get get a little view of that before we leave so um but no no ferraris yet or, or anything yet there, but, there, what there's, is coming, there's right? a lamborghini it's oh, a, lamborghini? It a classic one it didn't even look like a lamborghini it's like oh. a 1969 um kuntas no not a kuntas oh. it was something else it was weird i never heard of it but i said yeah i'll watch it so then I, I watched it pretty good guy that was in san marino all right sweet man well we'll get some uh views of you working here get started i won't hold you up You guys notice there's no generator sound. It's ultra quiet because he operates with the EcoFlow Delta Pro. It's a very powerful generator. It's all electric. Would you say that that EcoFlow can power all of your equipment simultaneously? Is it that powerful? Uh, I wouldn't say simultaneously, so don't get misled by others who say simultaneously because Let's just say I'm a one-man show. I would only be able to use one machine at a time. If you're a two-man, three-man show, uh, depending on which machine you're using, it, it might be able to. Otherwise, no, it won't be okay. able to handle all of them all at once. Could you at least have the the um, vacuum and the pre air compressor on at the same time? It's going to be close. If close? the vacuum has to start up, it's going to be a high, high startup amp, and then it might kick off. Okay. So then you have to reset it. All righty. And it's not necessary to have all these things on at once. That you can no. do work for months and years without ever using them all at once. Here's a little look at his setup. He went with all black Cox reels Hi. lined up top. He has one machine back here. 
And then all this space. Nice towel rack up above. This is a dual Cox reel. Air, electric. This is a um, European model Turnador. That's a blower especially made for detailing. He has a, another rack in there. I haven't seen that much. That's pretty cool. More storage space for his chemicals. More racks. And Jonathan is on Instagram and YouTube. And I will leave his links below right now. And I will also leave them in the description if you guys want to check him out. There's the eco flow. And Jonathan's been working on his YouTube channel, working with Reyes. And uh, Ray is the entrepreneur. He interviews business owners and helps them get on the map. And we'll go back into the center cargo area of the van shortly to get more footage and see exactly what he has in there. So Donovan, you were telling me that you've never charged the battery in this electric pump IK sprayer, right? Oh yeah, actually I, I did. Oh, you find I did it after in? all, I did. But it took you like a year, <laughs> right? Or something it like that? took me a long time. So this is an electric powered foam sprayer. Um, he, it's rechargeable. Battery operated. Oh, bat is that, oh, so it's not rechargeable? It is, it is oh, rechargeable. Okay, so it's rechargeable. Yeah, it is. So you don't insert new batteries, you just charge the old. Correct. And then it also has a manual pump feature here. Yes, it does, just in case the battery dies on you. And you have two of these. What's in your your other unit here? Uh, the other one is a pre soap with MSN by uh, Coach Kemi. Diluted, I believe, four to one. <laughs> And one thing about Jonathan is he is a premium detailer. He follows a lot of precautions to just give very, very special treatment to his vehicles. So if you guys know, um, it's very beneficial to pre-treat a vehicle um, sometimes before you even hit it with the foam wash or the hand wash. Right, Jonathan? Yes, sir. You just don't know if it's... Even though it's white, doesn't mean it's cool. You know, it might be hot to the touch and then you're going to dry out some chemicals on there and that's not going to be a, a fun day and and what's the purpose of the pre-treating the pre-treating well this car might not even need it because it's so clean but if it's but for a scenario that you would do it what would what would be the reasoning behind it uh to help knock off the uh the dirt that's currently on the uh, panels if you will so that way so that that the less would you be touch a... the less you touch the better for the for the vehicle so well the pre-treating is more effective as removing the dirt instead of just a foam wash to do it? I would say so, yes. Yeah, yeah. it's just a better solution. For me, everyone's gonna, everyone like, will have their own far, opinion. As far as your chemical solution that you mix, yes. it's a more of effective type of chemical? Yes, yes it is. And what'd you say was is inside of it? Uh, MSN by uh, Coach Kemi, I diluted four to one. Just one chemical, that's it? Correct. And is that a soap or what is that? It's a... Uh, I guess you could say it's like a degreaser. Okay. LS500. Is, a, is that a V8 in here or V6 turbo or something? V8. All right, here's a little look at his interior here. He has his scan grip tools neatly hanging right there in that area when he's working at night. There's various accessories that are nicely organized and categorized here. Oh, he just turned this light on for me. Sweet. He has LED strips installed in here. Man, if you are a high-end customer, you're going to get a lot of value. This is a trusted 
owner and operator. He's veteran owned. He, he's a ex-military. You got the vacuum made with a matte black color with the hose that is nicely routed along the wall there with some sort of ties. Well, another smaller chemical rack. There's a steam cleaner stash in here. The VX500. Some nice neat chemical racks right there as well. Housing a ton of stoner products. Here is his generator and his air compressor neatly stored away in that corner. We have a Craftsman tool chest, probably full of power tools and whatnot. Some great towels here. An area just for ceramic coatings. He has a step ladder here that doubles as a step and a table. Hey, Jonathan, what do you have in your tool chest? What's what is that used for? You could turn the key and open it up. It's a okay. lot of miscellaneous stuff. Okay. <clears throat> Let's check it out. Nice. In case he ever needs to work on something on the job, nice little set of tools. Little Q-tips, clips, pet removal tools. This looks like a clay bar area. More clay bar power tools. This guy is very involved in the detailing industry, you guys. Polishers, mini polishers, rotaries, probably everything you need right there to do a correction job. So we were just talking about uh, hooking up little extras for the client because it goes a long way. And in this particular package doesn't really require a pre-treat, but what what are your, your thoughts on that, Jonathan, as far as like how, how is that good for business? Uh, I think it's good for business. Like you had mentioned earlier, it goes a long way. Um, I mean, not, not too much because you know, you're still getting charged for your time. However, just that, just that little bit extra will actually maybe push you over to the edge and help you out a little bit with more clients For and sure. the customer. For sure. Have you noticed that? Um, yes and no. It, it, but th it makes you sleep better at night, right? Yes. Too. To know that I, I did just that little extra. So what? He didn't give me a tip or, you know, I didn't get any recommendations. Just to know that I did that extra part makes me feel better. Uh huh. For sure. It's like a business standard, right? Like yeah. you produce these, these results and you stand by them and they're kind of consistent, right? On every... Yeah. Have you had any trouble like um, with with uh, some jobs where maybe you cut a corner and you learned your lesson where you're not going to do that again? No. No? No. So, I, so, I don't like to cut corners. Yeah, so pretty much you just give the full the full process just to... Uh, so full you don't process, have any problems. Full process plus a little extra. For sure. I'll definitely be one to say that I've had some little mistakes where I thought maybe the windshield was clean and it really wasn't. I missed the windshield. Customer said, hey man, my windshield had some smudges. 
so moving forward i i just man i've bust my butt i clean every square inch of the car every single time i don't want to have any kickback from the customer i want to basically just wow them i'd rather not disappoint them and i'd rather not just give them something basic i kind of pretty much want to wow them each time and that's possible how is that possible making sure there's a nice coating a dressing on the interior a nice coating a dressing on the uh, tires at the end maybe even dressing up some of the plastics making sure the interior smells fresh putting some nice lines in the carpet fibers and the mats revitalizing their carpet fibers you know just just those little extras where when they get into that vehicle it feels detailed right Donovan not only feels but is it is right yes sir have you ever had to clean up after any detailers mistakes or uh, stuff like that or no because by the time I got the car for the next wash it was so messed up <laughs> <laughs> for sure man and uh, how's your take on like your your packages because i know some guys that only offer like a deep clean because that's almost like every time we do a detail it's almost like it's always a deep clean right yeah. so he he kind of offers a deep clean and he gets paid accordingly and if it really doesn't necessarily need that much i'm sure he gives him a break but he doesn't have many packages what about you how many packages do you offer do you offer a base detail a deep clean and what do you what do you recommend oh what do i what do i offer yeah i offer i think four packages like a basic interior a basic exterior and then those two combined in one other package and then the ultimate package so basically like four okay what would you say your best month was my best month honestly was like last month or the month before that it was just ridiculous and it was it was i don't want to say middle of winter but technically it was still winter but people were just calling me uh, one after the other rain or shine they still wanted that wash i'm like wow, right that's crazy so i'm thinking for i know for a uh, average good month for detailers is about 5k so you must have made more than 5k i'm sure no, i want to say at least at least 5k 5k yeah but i would say that's a great month don't forget yeah. you know that that you still got to put that back into the business just because we say 5k or 10k yeah it sounds, absolutely sounds like a lot but when you own your business you're gonna learn uh you got supplies you got bills to pay family to feed yeah have you calculated your daily cost to operate your business? What's your overhead? Like, have you calculated your monthly and then divided it by a 30 day so you can get like an approximate uh, day? Like for me, it's approximately like 40 bucks a day to operate my business just off the start. What would you say? Have you done that yet? No, or? I haven't. I no. can't say honestly done that, Brandon. But I mean, after every detail, I kind of break it down to, I kind of compare it to what I'm getting paid at my day job and to see whether or not I'm getting paid the same double, triple, or am I losing? Most of the time, I'm always at a minimum working, uh, getting paid double. So you're, ma I'd say, more close to $100 an hour. Yeah, roughly. Okay. But I'm happy with that. Some people aren't happy with that. Some people yeah. are. But I'm I, happy I with that. I like $100 an hour. Yeah, that's not bad. I also like $200 oh, an yeah, hour. Oh, yeah, that too. would be better. <laughs> so check this out, guys. You got the white paint and the white powder coat diamond plate. That's, that's clean. I really like that. So Jonathan, this is a full-size sedan, right? Correct. So does that mean the price goes up because it's a full-size? Kind of, depending on the, on the services that he's requesting. Okay. 
So what did you do so far? So far I did a pre-wash, did the tires, the rims. Now I did main contact. Now I'm just doing the uh, iron, iron decon. I smell that. Yeah, this is a- uh, Smells like rotten egg. Coach Kimmy, Triple R. This guy has zero protection on. You can just see how the water's beating. Not even like sheeting. Yeah. But I love to see nice cars like this get detailed. I love to see, you know, the customers getting the value for detailing because they're really making the right choice by trying to preserve their vehicle. I mean, Jonathan's gonna probably use about 10 chemicals alone today on, the, <laughs> on that thing, on this thing. Where, where some just use one and it's called like that purple stuff. What is that purple stuff called? For like a washing racks or something? No, like <laughs> super clean everything. Oh, super clean? It's Go clear. guys, do not use super clean. I made that mistake. That stuff is garbage. <laughs> Anything that's at Walmart, I would say. That's another video coming up, guys. I'm gonna tour a local detail supply store here in California, and I'm gonna kind of give you guys a rundown of what to expect of what a detail supply store offers us detailers. Cause we make many trips to those shops on a daily, on a daily, weekly, sometimes. So. Oh yeah. Summer, you're there like almost every day. Right? Because you forget something, you run out of stuff because you're using so much stuff during the summer because you're so busy. Hopefully you're yeah. busy. Absolutely. You can't always order everything online. Sometimes no. you just got to stop in like like how a mechanic would stop in at a parts store and get a part. You need to go get a new pad. You know, you got to go fill up water. You need a special chemical. So how long are you going to let that dwell for? Just for like one minute because it's still technically in in direct sunlight even though it is a white car it still gets hot okay it's hot today guys it's hot all right guys i couldn't come out here and film him doing all this work without me pitching in a little bit so i offered to help drive the vehicle here and uh, using this great drying towel here. Well, that's great. I said, I've said great. Oh, okay. <laughs> said great. Oh, you yeah. All right guys, so stay tuned to the end of the video because we're gonna have Jonathan offer some more detailing business advice on aspiring detailers that would like to get into the detailing game and start out with a Metris. And if you're liking the video so far guys, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and give us a comment guys. I would really appreciate that. I hope you guys are enjoying the video so far. So I just asked Jonathan where to hang up the towel and he told me 
there's a special spot for that. So he's gonna show you guys. Right here. What so, in the world? Instead of you guys hanging your towels on top of your dirty van, even if it, you say it's clean, but when you drove to the location, it, it got dirty. So you have all this little fine dust accumulating on your van. And I see everybody putting their towels over here, on top of here, right here, over there. This, there is no fine sand on this bar. So when you're done drying your towels, you pull it, pull it off where you guys hang it at and you just collected all that stuff that's on your van. Just like you would have just dropped it on the floor. You might as well just left it on the floor. So if you want to get one of these, look up HCO. Jeez. Ask the guys in the back, they'll hook you up. Different styles, different lengths. So, and then you could just have that uh, hanging as you're driving too. So yeah, it's, yeah, you could. You got a towel bar, man. Jeez. All right, I like it. So now he's rolling up his electrical cord. How do you like the uh, Cox reel electrical cord? Uh, I love it. I love all the Cox reels. I love all the retractable reels because I remember back in the days when I started, I, I was there too with my wife's RAV4. So I had to borrow her RAV4, how to upload everything, how to download everything, and then how to clean everything up, and then you had to upload it again. And then when you get home, you have to download it again. Okay. There's a lot of work. So I understand how humble beginnings yeah i do so with these dual this dual setup uh-huh how does it function does it does it oh yeah is so it any different than a single or no is it pretty much pretty much they what's are what's the difference they're both on a single they're both single however they're on one oh, okay i see they're connected on that bracket can we get a look at your business card i like that yeah okay. sure so you got this here Customers asking for a business card. I'm always back here instead of walking to the front of the car. Wow. Just had one of these. That's a beautiful finish there. What is that? Like a matte? You got to hook me up with the guy who made that. I think okay. I'm going to. Matte black, I think. I'm going to just get the exact same thing and just put my name there. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's up with your rat, man? A uh, matter of fact, I talked to a company and they're currently working on my rat as we speak and I am just waiting for a confirmation email to give them the go ahead I already threw my deposit down uh, it's gonna run me approximately seven hundred dollars so I remember you had a different price before so that seven hundred sounds a little bit better oh yeah totally especially sure. the way I'm going I really like that price much better than what I had I think that's about what I paid for my advertisement yeah and guys quick note don't pay more than 700 bucks for your advertisement that's the sweet spot i've i've called around and i got quotes and i had people tell me two grand three grand a thousand five hundred and i kept calling and i and it, it should be around 650 or so if you guys can get um they call it decals or you can get a half wrap and that'll be about your sweet spot all right guys so he just uh clay barred and dried off and everything and he just applied this wax and now he's going to apply it with his machine he applied it with this little bar can i see that bar little goes a long way you don't need so much that stuff is great i can smell it from here it smells like menthol kind of And is this stuff UV protection? And, yeah, uh, customer water requests. Yeah. Hydrophobic, should last you about six months. Do you normally use wax like this rather than a spray wax? Or uh, you, the, you change it the up? The client requested this specifically, like really? a paste wax, if you will. Oh, he's, oh, like old school. Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah, guys, leave a comment. Do your clients request old school carnuba paste wax is that what they prefer or do you guys recommend something else 
like a spray wax that's to me i know the ceramic hybrid spray wax is one of the most technological advanced waxes on the in the industry right now because it's so easy to use it's pretty much uh surpassed the old ways of the carnauba wax right i, I would say yeah some would say but does this wax leave a better gloss or what's the what would you say the um difference it leaves a good gloss i would say it's hydrophobic i know that much i put it on my van and it's still good and it's been about eight months so what's the process after you apply it with this so according to the instructions you gotta let it cure for about 35 45 minutes and then go ahead and wipe it off and then you'll be good to go and are you buffing off or are you just correct you're buffing off i mean buffing off wiping off i guess that would be the same and thing are you using Soda? a special towel for that as well yeah i do have a um, uh, wipe off towel okay microfiber towel that i use for wiping is it off. shaggy or um buffy yes it is okay i don't know what gsm it is i think i don't want to say the wrong number of you would be like that's the wrong one well i have to say it's looking really nice so far So what kind of polisher is that? This is the SPTA. I've heard of SPTA. It's all over Amazon. Yeah, it's pretty good for what I mean. I'm just. I like it. Yeah. Simple application for my wax. Just for the wax. It, pretty much. I don't use it for anything else really. I have a question for you guys. So, is it just me, or am I the only one that waxes? all the windows when i'm doing spray wax <laughs> i i'll do spray wax on the headlights the windows should i be doing that or what, what's your comment on that you guys do it what about you jonathan no i don't is that for what purpose does it mess up the quality of it the clarity or no, would you say I, I just I the extra work it, i would i don't think it would harm it any but i just don't not necessary no yeah I probably use a dedicated window polisher. Right. But no, I wouldn't just use regular wax. All right. <clears throat> so, Jonathan. Can we see your ozone generator? Sure. Let me grab it real quick. Let's Let see right this, guys. So this is an ozone generator. And I want to ask one of you guys, what is this? What is this used for? Ozone ionizer. Know? Ozone ionizer. Ozone ionizer. And how many milligrams or do you know what the specs are on this thing? No, I don't. Looks like a 10,000 or 20,000. So what do we use these what is this tool used for you guys leave a comment and if nobody can guess it i will leave a comment in the comment section Some fancy buckets yeah what is that coach kemi sweet so you upgraded because you had the silver or the clear yeah i did have the clear ones but uh i didn't like something about them okay i'm just picky like that you know i, I think it's a good good upgrade so I didn't get you clay barring the vehicle. I, I, I think I might've missed that segment. Oh yeah. But there's your clay bar there. Yeah, this is my clay mitt. It's made by uh, Nano Skin, I believe. It, it, was, it was engraved in here, but engraved. Sweet. So yeah, this is my Nano Skin. This one's a fine one because he didn't have too much contamination on his car. And yeah. I didn't want to mar it up so much. Even, so they even make though. a fine, medium, and heavy grit uh, clay mitts. Uh, I believe it, I've only seen fine, and medium okay i think i've seen that the same too yeah i use a clay mitt by max shine and i i swear by that i love it if you guys want to get the max shine clay mitt you can go on maxshineusa.com and use my code wad 15 wad 15 and you will save 15 percent off your 
order when you shop online at maxshineusa.com. Alright guys, I appreciate you watching to the very end. I'm gonna let Jonathan pack up his van here and then we're gonna go down by the lake and I'm gonna ask him some final questions and we're gonna wrap up the video. Alright guys, so we made it down to the lake and I'm here with Jonathan. Uh, finished the detail, he worked hard. And any afterthoughts on that be that detail? How'd it go? Uh, it was pretty easy, pretty good. S satisfied with the results? Yes, very satisfied. Called your customer? I did, I texted him, he said he's gonna come down and pick it up right now. Alright. Alright, so as I said, I wanted to have him leave some final notes on a detailer possibly making entry into the detailing world entering in the way he did he did have a temporary setup before this but if you're interested in getting a mercedes metris and getting it set up with a custom setup how would they go about doing that um pretty much you could just go to carmax or any other uh, mercedes-benz dealer and see what they have in stock most of them are usually out of stock especially right now because they're converting from it really so they're to hard to find kind of kind of yeah it's hit okay. or miss, but CarMax is, is pretty good. And uh, what a kind of a pay, car payment would they expect to pay with maybe like a zero down? Oh, something? zero down, you're probably looking at upwards and over thousand dollar payment. Um, with my Lexus down payment and I threw some money down, my current payment is about six hundred dollars. Six hundred bucks. It's still a lot, but it's I have my day it's job. It's manageable, now. right? Yeah, it's manageable. And then hundred dollars insurance probably. 84 84 yeah and uh for your custom setup where did you have it built at uh custom setup was built at h2o in covina okay and then how much did you pay for that uh i did uh, installments with the sema because i couldn't afford everything all at once okay so it was a couple thousand dollars here for some reels a couple thousand dollars there for the flooring and then the the uh the frames and so the did water tanks did you get it all done at once or did you do it in segments after you acqu you acquired the van first, correct? Correct. And then after that, you did you gather any equipment while you were going throughout your journey or did you just go in there, boom, I need all this stuff and... No, I gave them the plan, but I needed to work on it and I needed to pay off the current ASEMA because you got to pay it off in three months. If you don't, then you're going to get charged a lot of interest. So keep that in mind when you do. And how long did it take for your build? um it took about well i was working really hard with it i was fortunate enough to have some investors invest in me as far as family members um but it took about three to four months and so you were operating with a temporary setup during correct that? yes so i did have a uh mobile van i mean mobile uh, vacuum if you will a mobile ext well extractor is always mobile um, so you bought your custom detail setup from H2O, but they gradually built it yes. over a course of time. Yeah, so I'd have to bring and it, it back. it took you how many time? How many months? Um, I would say total about four to five months. And to the guy that's looking for a Met Mercedes Metris, what do you what do you tell him? Uh, I would tell him, don't listen to anybody else. You know the the final decision. If you want it, by all means get it. But make sure you don't dig yourself a bigger hole than. Then you can't afford because then you're you're, you're gonna lose it mm -hmm. but uh be but confident can, and be positive and basically get the metris yes get, get the metris it's worth it well you got an amazing setup and i love it Thank and you. i'm a big fan i love what you do <laughs> And please, guys, follow his IG, follow his YouTube. And thank you so much again, guys. I appreciate you all. And I'll leave you with this beautiful view. 